All right, everybody. I'm back with another uh, YouTube video. I apologize for uh, not being able to post one in a while. Uh, but on the other hand, I didn't think my next video was going to be another tribute video either. So um, let's get right to the chase. Um, arguably the greatest ring announcer, not only in my opinion, but also in the history of professional wrestling, uh, passed away today. Uh, Howard the Fink Finkel from WWE. Uh, he was 69 years old. Um, he suffered a stroke sometime last year. I want to say it was in, I want to say it was in either the summer or the spring of 2019. And uh, the last I read, his uh, his cause of death was a uh, was listed as uh, complications following a stroke. So. Um, I want to say I saw an article recently on Fox News that, uh, that said that. Uh, but anyway. Um, I'm trying to dwell on the positive and the good times here and not on the bad times. Um, you know, Howard, uh, Howard Finkel had a career that spanned generations. I and mean, he was, uh, he truly was a, a uh, indelible part of my childhood, without a doubt. Uh, some of the greatest, some of the greatest moments in uh, pro wrestling history that uh, took place during my childhood. He uh, he was a part of. Um, uh, Howard Finkel. He was he was the first and longest serving employee in uh, WWE history. Uh, after the company was officially established on April Fool's Day of uh, 1980. Uh, Finkel actually uh, began working for the WWWF in uh, 1975 um, and the WWWF was owned by uh, Vincent J. McMahon also known as Vince McMahon Sr. Uh, Howard Finkel made his ring announcing debut at Madison Square Garden in uh, uh, January of 77. I want to say January 17th was the exact date. Uh, I could be wrong though. Sometime in the middle of January. Uh, but he um you know, he also uh, he was also a backstage employee and a historian for WWE as well. Um, his uh, his career spanned nearly half a decade. I mean, he you know, from 1975 to the present day, if my math is right, I want to say that's 45 years. And 43 of those years, for the most part, he was a ring announcer. Um, that's a uh, that's, that's one heck of a resume, if you know, as far as being a ring announcer, in my opinion, you're able to you're able to do something like that with the same company for forty something years or thirty something years. That's uh, good for you. You've reached a you've reached a real milestone and many many more since then. Um, uh, Howard Finkel built his reputation on announcing matches at Madison Square Garden, and on. January 19th, uh, 1987, I want to say, uh, was something that I read. I had never, I had never known about this. Uh, Howard Finkel was presented with a, uh, a plaque by, uh, commentator Mean Gene Okerlund, uh, commemorating his, uh, 10-year anniversary of announcing matches at Madison Square Garden. And uh, if you're able to be immortalized like that you know, by a banner or a plaque or a statue or anything, or anything of that nature, like what Howard Finkel was, um, good for you. I mean, you've uh, you've ac you've accomplished a lot in your life and your career with the company, and you're um, you're more than deserving of something of that nature, as far as an honor. Um, uh, Howard Finkel, he. Uh, Speaking of Madison Square Garden, um, he was actually credited for coming up with the name WrestleMania um, in 1985, and it's it's become an annual pay per view ever since. And um, you know, when it comes to Madison Square Garden, uh, everyone says you know the New York Knicks and the uh, uh, New York Rangers are some of the first things that come to mind when it comes to. Uh, Madison Square Garden, but for me, there's five things. Uh, Howard Finkel, WrestleMania 20, WrestleMania 10, WrestleMania 1, and a portion of uh, WrestleMania 2. 
um, WrestleMania 2, I want to say, was split up in three different venues. Uh, Madison Square Garden, uh, the Allstate Arena in Chicago. Well, at the time, it was known as the Allstate, uh, not the Allstate Arena. Uh, the Rosemont Horizon, excuse me. And uh, the, uh, the LA Forum, where the Los Angeles Lakers used to play, I believe. And... Um, you know, for, for me, every time I every time I uh, hear or think about Madison Square Garden, that's that's what will always come to my mind. Are those five things? Um, I was gonna say something else. Also, I just remembered it. Oh, uh, Howard Finkel's uh, signature call of announcing that there was a new champion at the end of a at the end of a match, especially at WrestleMania or any other pay per view for that matter. It. Uh, it went on to be adopted into the, I'll call it the lexicon of combat sports, or just the overall, the overall way he uh, he announced it. And you'll you know, look on YouTube for example, you'll see videos doing uh, people doing uh, their best impersonation of either Michael Buffer or Howard Finkel, you know, because that's that's how great of a that's how much of an impact they left on us and uh, how great uh, how great they were at their craft. Uh, Howard Finkel was also credited for giving the nickname of the Dragon to Ricky Steamboat. Um, I remember reading somewhere, uh, somewhere, I want to say I was in high school at the time. I thought I had read, heard, or, uh, seen somewhere that Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, uh, the nickname of the Dragon came up from, uh, either somebody else made it up or he made it up himself, but it was for, uh, it was uh, Howard Finkel who uh, who came up with it, and uh, going back to Howard Finkel coming up with uh, names, uh, he was credited for coming up with the name of uh, WrestleMania, and he served he served as an announcer for nearly every one until he adopted a lighter uh, work schedule in the early two thousands. Uh, WrestleMania, the first WrestleMania, took place back in nineteen eighty five, and I want to say. I want to say up until WrestleMania 30, if my if my memory serves me correctly. I want to say it was I want to say it was WrestleMania 30 or WrestleMania 29, where he um, it was the last time he made an appearance at uh, at WrestleMania as far as being a ring announcer. Um. Speaking of WrestleMania, um, WrestleMania 25, the day before that, um, in 2005, uh, Howard Finkel was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame by Mean Gene Okerlund. Um, much like Howard Finkel, Mean Gene Okerlund was also a part of some uh, memorable moments, not only in the history of pro wrestling, but also in, in my many years of watching wrestling, and even, even moments that took place before I was born. You know, both... Uh, both guys were a part of uh, many, many a memorable event in uh, in the history of professional wrestling. And uh, this is coming from a guy who's been watching it since he was, what, one or something like that? Well, literally ever since the day I was born, I've probably been, I've been, uh, I've been watching wrestling and following the business ever since. You know, especially events that took place, uh, Either around the time I was born, I was too young to remember them, or sometime beforehand where I wasn't, or I wasn't even born yet. I look back and watch all these old pay-per-views. I look back and I watch these old pay-per-views and I think to myself, why couldn't I have been around to see this? <laughs> like uh, WrestleManias 1, 2, and 3, for example, I didn't see them until sometime in the mid-1990s. I want to say I found them on a, I want to say I found them at a garage sale. And, uh, on VHS, that was the first times I ever watched WrestleMania One, WrestleMania Two, and WrestleMania Three. But um, that's another that's another series of uh, events for another day. Um, off the top of my head, some of my uh, some of the greatest moments I had of uh, moments and memories, at least as far back as I can remember, of um, Howard Finkel calling various. Uh, Various moments in uh, 
pro wrestling history. This is as far back as my memory goes. Uh, one of them... <clears throat> excuse me. Here we are. Um, announcing the return of uh, Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 18 before his, uh, before his match with The Rock. Um, it was WrestleMania 18 truly really was a classic. It was a dream match. You know, The Rock versus Hulk Hogan. Icon versus Icon. Um, everybody and their mother in the Toronto Sky Dome was cheering uh, for Hulk Hogan and booing The Rock out of the building. You know, just because of the nostalgia. You know, the last time the last time Hulk Hogan was at WrestleMania 18, or the whole, last time uh, last time Hulk Hogan was at uh, WrestleMania was at WrestleMania 6. Um, against uh, the Ultimate Warrior, uh, title for title match, the Intercontinental Championship versus the uh, WWF Championship. And 12 years later, Hulk Hogan uh, makes his return to the Sky Dome. It was, um, it was a good match. I was, I was at a friend's house watching WrestleMania 18. And um, we were we were literally getting goosebumps watching the first couple of seconds of the match, just you know, listening to the crowd. You know, they were you know, they were taking in the moment, you know, literally watching, uh, literally watching history unfold. And it was one of those many great moments. I'll look back and I'll say I'll never forget it. Um, November twentieth, two thousand eleven. Um, a little more than thirty four and a half years after making his uh, debut. Um, Howard Finkel was named the uh, quote unquote. Uh, special ring announcer for uh, uh, CM Punk's WWE Championship match against Alberto Del Rio, uh, Survivor Series 2011. Uh, Howard Finkel, I mean, he was about ready to announce CM Punk. Uh, he was about ready to make, uh, you know, he was about ready to announce CM Punk. You know, you know his height, his height, his weight, and where he was from. But the crowd started. Uh, Started a Howard Finkel chant that went on for about 30 seconds and I gave him a standing ovation. I mean, you could tell Howard was so glad to be back at Madison Square Garden. He literally looked like he was about to cry. And, uh, yeah, that was, um, uh, that was rather, uh, rather surprising if you ask me. You know, being able to, uh, being able to bring, uh, being able to bring someone the likes of Howard Finkel back to literally where he started. You know, in the, the literally the very arena that he started in, uh, Madison Square Garden. Um, another moment I'll never forget with Howard Finkel was uh, when he announced the all-time attendance record for uh, the Houston Astrodome um, at WrestleMania 17. Uh, April Fool's Day of uh, 2001 is when WrestleMania 17 took place. Uh, 67,925 people jam-packed in the Astrodome. And um, I want to say the last time there was ever an event that took place at the Houston Astrodome, I want to say, I want to say it was a concert that uh, uh, George Strait uh, recorded there. It was recorded in 2003, I want to say, as it came out on a CD. It was called, I want to say it was called, uh, For the Last Time, Live at the Houston Astrodome. And... Um, that was the last time the Houston Astrodome was open for any kind of event whatsoever. And then uh, about two and a half years later when Hurricane Katrina hit, um, the Houston Astrodome was used as a makeshift, uh, uh, makeshift uh, shelter for those who were, uh, who were displaced by Hurricane Katrina. And um, the way I see it, if that was if that was a good way for the Houston Astrodome to go out, you know, literally helping people out. That was you know, what better way to go out than that? Uh, but yeah, the the Houston Astrodome's uh, all-time attendance record of sixty-seven thousand nine hundred and twenty-five uh, because of WrestleMania seventeen. I don't think that record was ever. I don't think that record was ever challenged. I mean, it was. You know, maybe there was an event somewhere that got close to it or almost broke it, but nowhere even close. Um, Howard Finkel being introduced as Finkus Maximus at WrestleMania Nine. I was only I was only four at the time, uh, but I found it funny how there was a guy. Uh, 
uh, standing on, you know, somewhere on the stage or you know, he was standing somewhere with a bunch of ropes behind him or around him and he was, he literally looked like he was auditioning for a Hercules movie. <laughs> I mean, here, here I am at four years old, I see uh, I see Howard Finkel on TV, and I just start laughing because of how ridiculous the costume looked that he was wearing. But, uh, but because WrestleMania 9 took place from uh, from Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas, uh, they had to go with the um, the ancient Rome, uh, the ancient Rome theme. So, uh, to me personally, it was, uh, I won't say it was a great moment, but I just thought it was funny just because of, of how he looked. I mean, type in, uh, you'll see pictures of it on, uh, on Google Images or Yahoo Images. Type in, type in Howard Finkel WrestleMania 9 or something. You'll see some pictures of him, how he, how he looks in that costume. Um, speaking of the uh, Toronto Sky Dome and Hulk Hogan, um, another moment. Uh, Howard Finkel announcing that uh, the Ultimate Warrior was the new, uh, the new WWF champion at WrestleMania 6. Um... I mean, the first time I ever, first time I ever saw this match, you know, was sometime in the mid nineteen nineties. Uh, a friend of mine had uh, had WrestleMania six on a VHS. It was the first time I ever watched WrestleMania six from beginning to end because at the time WrestleMania six happened, I was only one. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, you know, I literally had no idea that. Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior had a match against each other until after I look at the front cover on the VHS. I see Hulk Hogan on one side and I see the Ultimate Warrior on the other. And I was like, I was like, could this have been the main event? And then I, I look on the back of the VHS cover and I see, uh, and I see title for title, uh, uh, WWF champion, uh, Hulk Hogan versus Intercontinental champion, Ultimate Warrior. So... Yeah, it was uh, it was uh, another truly great moment hearing uh, hearing Howard Finkel announce that uh, uh, the Ultimate Warrior defeated Hulk Hogan. Like, I can't do a good uh, Howard Finkel impersonation, and if you know, even on my best day, I couldn't do one. Uh, no matter how hard I try, I could never do it. Uh, unless I was watching something where the volume was turned up almost all the way, and I. I knew what he was going to say about when and when and where and so on and so forth. He was going to say someone's uh, uh, someone's height, what their name was, where they were from, and if they were a champion or not. And you, you couldn't even tell, but I can I can do no such good impersonation. You know, I can, I can try all I want to. I've tried numerous of times. I still can't get it right, but. Yeah, there is, there is no one other like like Howard Finkel. Uh, another great moment. Um, announcing uh, announcing that Randy Savage. Uh, Randy Savage uh, defeated Ricky the Dragon Steamboat at WrestleMania three for the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, not just you know, not just Howard Finkel's announcing uh, the end of the match and the respective introductions in the beginning of it. Uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and Randy Savage went out there in a true classic. They went out at WrestleMania three, put on a true classic, and at the same time they changed the game as we would know it. So uh, overall, guys, you know there are so many other great memories of that I have of Howard Finkel. I couldn't fit them all in one list or in one video. But um, let me know. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, let me uh, let me know what you guys think of the Fink. You know, any memories you may have had from your from your childhood, or most recently, or however you want to cut it. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Uh, follow me on Instagram. Subscribe to me on YouTube if you haven't already. Uh, post a comment. Let me know what you guys think. Keep an eye out for more videos in the future. And. Uh, talk to you uh, I'll talk to you guys whenever I talk to you have a good one